Hi, welcome to Green TV, the show that focuses on independent Green Party and Green Party candidates and positive Green New Deal solutions, eco jobs for the economy, Green Party solar jobs, rail jobs, geothermal jobs, efficiency jobs, weatherization jobs. On Green TV tonight, Independent Green Party Chairman, State Chairman Joseph Piotto. Independent Green Party Vice State Chairman Gail Farrell Parker. And member of the Independent Green Party of Virginia Central Committee and 9th Congressional District Chairman George R. Tex Wood. I'm Kerry Campbell. Thanks for being with us. Tex, it is so good to see you. Uh, let's, uh, let's start off. You're coming to us uh, this evening from Patrick County, Virginia, way down south. Yeah. Uh, coming from uh, Stewart, Virginia, at the base of the Blue Ridge. Parkway is not far from here. And I'm sitting in the Honduras coffee shop. Uh, Becky uh, Detreus and Chris Owen, nice enough to set this up in here for me. Uh, and I'm glad to uh, hear and be participating with you, Joe and Gail again. Certainly is a fine group to be with. <laughs> Tex, uh, uh, let's uh, start off by introducing yourself to the uh, folks who are watching. Where were, you, where were you born, Tex, and where did you grow up? Well, the latter part, I hope, is still going on, and some people have some doubts about that, Kerry. But I was born in Galveston, Texas. Um, my father and mother moved when I was six years old, and what's the old saw, I decided to go with them uh, to Greensboro, North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I grew up mostly there, but uh, I heard Gail mentioning earlier about some possibilities in uh, the Raleigh area for trains going north into Virginia, and was put in mind, it's so sad we don't have any more trains, not just for the practical reasons, but for the, uh, the I wouldn't say romantic reasons, but I can recall my father had to send me north to learn Southern manners to a boarding school. Christ Church School, east of Richmond. Uh, I got stuck into that because my older brother, my father discovered he was going to get in some trouble. He sent my older brother there, and they did such a fine job of stroking my father that uh, he subsequently sent me there. But I can recall having to get to Richmond if I got there in time, or if you had good grades, you could get a long weekend. And I lived in Greensboro, so I could haul to uh, Richmond, catch that train, and get in uh, Raleigh, and then switch to a bus real quick, and it saved me about 45 minutes on a long weekend. But that rush for the train, uh, and the noise of the train, and I grew up listening to trains. Uh, it's just a shame that uh, we don't have those around here. Well, and of course, the statistics bear, bear out everything that you're saying, Tex. Every dollar that we invest in uh, rail creates uh, $20 of economic growth. And of course, the most important thing about uh, why the Independent Green Party of Virginia, uh, Joe Odo here with us, the state chair, Gail Farrell Parker, the vice uh, chair, and, and you, Tex, why we advocate for rail is uh, saving lives and, and growing the economy. 33,000 Americans die every year on the highways, 330,000 uh, are injured. Now, Tex, uh, you grew up, uh, how many folks, uh, how many youngins were there in your family? Uh, I had an older brother, a younger sister, and a younger brother. I uh, Thankfully, they are all still with us. And uh, so you, you went to that private boarding school, uh, took the train, and uh, take, bring us on along. Uh, you, you made it safely out of that school with a diploma? <laughs> Uh, yes, I did, uh, much to the surprise of, of the rest of them. I did my undergraduate work at Duke, interrupted by service in the Marine Corps, uh, Vietnam. Came back, finished up, uh, spent, as a youth, I was in the trade. I was a masonry laborer, carpenter laborer. And I recall that uh, I had pledged to myself that once I got that uh, bachelor's degree, I would never touch another brick. And you know what I did the following summer, of course. <laughs> yeah, that well, it mostly put me on the mortar mixer. So he's you know, eight hours a day mixing mortar. So, you know, best laid plans of mice and men. 
Tex, when I did that job, we called the mortar mud. Uh, that might have been a while. Ago. Is that the same thing, how they refer to it when you're carrying bricks? And we called it carrying bricks and hod in that day. I think it's a, maybe a rite of passage for us country boys. Oh, I reckon, uh, but you were in a much fancy place. You had the hot, you carry five, six of them at one time. Uh, we just had wheelbarrows and uh, had to throw them up, you know, two and three and four scaffolds high, two at a time. Uh, I think that should be an Olympic sport. <laughs> oh, I'll, Eric, uh, I'll coach that. I will not. Go, go sit. <laughs> now, now, uh, Tex, I want to I want to bring uh, State Chairman Joe Odo and State uh, Vice Chair of the Independent Green Party in here and uh, see if uh, see if they had a question for you. Well, I too uh, slung some mud when I first moved to the District of Columbia area, so it's uh, good to see you get a degree in hand and go sling mud, right? So, but then didn't you go and do some more uh, some more uh, uh, like schooling, I guess? <laughs> uh, yes, I went back. Uh, I uh, went back to school at uh, University of North Carolina Greensboro and got a uh, Master's of Fine Arts, which is a terminal degree. Uh, and I've used it. I've produced uh, television news. I've been in print, you know, in print quite a bit, editing and just being a reporter, magazine, newspaper, stuff like that. But I settled on, I made a uh, vow, and I'm certain there are a lot of people who made similar vows, and I hope they were able to at least have the opportunity to either fulfill them or not. But it was in a precarious position uh, one time when I was in the military. I was making all kinds of promises if I got out of this. Uh, one of them was that I was going to teach. And uh, I wound up fulfilling that vow. I spent a lot of time teaching. I've taught in seventh grade. That's a trip. I'm not sure I've committed. Seventh grade, ninth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade, of course, college and university level later on. But I now, uh, I make apple trees. Folks, you're watching uh, Green TV. Uh, with us uh, on Green TV today is the Independent Green Party Central Committee member, uh, George R. Tex Wood, uh, also chairman of the Independent Green Party in the 9th Congressional District, state chairman of the Independent Green Party, Joseph P. Odo, and State Vice Chair of the Independent Green Party, Gail Farrell Parker. Uh, as you were talking about your service, uh, Tex, I was reminded that uh, Joseph Odo also uh, grew up with uh, uh, U.S. Marine Corps experience. Your dad's a retired Marine, isn't he, Joe? Correct, and her brother as well. Uh, so, so His name was Santini, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a seventh grader right now, Tex, so I uh, can relate to that experience. I <laughs> <laughs> teach in seventh grade. <laughs> Tex, uh, you became, uh, along the way there, very active in politics, and I n know that over the years... Now, I don't think I ever got the opportunity to be very active in politics, but civic service, yes. Uh, uh, what it got me into this is I was living and working and teaching in Missouri, when uh, Governor Brown was trying to get the nomination for the Democratic uh, uh, presidential thing. And it was when uh, Bill Clinton was trying. And of course, he got it. But uh, there was a meeting of the Democrats in the area where I was, and people talked to me and said, need to show up, we need you to cast a vote so we get a delegate for Brown. And I uh, didn't show up. They needed 20 votes to get a delegate. They only had 19 votes. And that guilt got me into a whole lot of subsequent activity. Well, we're grateful for that vote. And, and it has uh, many times in history uh, that one vote has made the world of, of difference. I recall one of the history books I read uh, once about the determination of what the national language in the United States would be. That. Uh, it failed being German by one vote. So it's the... Oh, kidding. Uh, the well, that wouldn't hurt you because you're fluent in German. <laughs> well, I'm uh, still working on English. <laughs> uh, Tex, you told me a fascinating short story you might share with our audience uh, about the sit-ins, uh, that you recall that time. Um, do, do you oh, know? yeah. Uh, the... Uh, 
uh, in Greensboro at uh, Woolworths. Uh, I grew up in Greensboro. And I guess I must have been, I don't know, 12, 14 years old. Uh, and it's, you know, it was not the first sit-ins. They had sit-ins before that uh, over in Winston-Salem, and everybody ignored me. So they came to Greensboro. Uh, and I'm not going to tell the whole story, but my, uh, my mother and three of her friends of uh, the downtown, they would uh, stop in at Woolworths for uh, lunch. Uh, and they were there when this was going on. And in the background, my older brother, the Episcopal mm-hmm. priest, was back there uh, helping to organize it. Uh, I was very deeply involved in it. And my father, uh, who was a physician, a doctor, uh, was involved somewhat in civic affairs because it was his responsibility. And it didn't take them long. They met at the Mayfair or the Mayflower Cafeteria. Uh, and Dad, uh, all along, he was an OBGYN. He didn't have separate waiting rooms. I mean, he got there in the mid-40s, never had separate waiting rooms. Uh, and his attitude, the attitude of most of the people that were the moves and shakers is, well, yeah, you know, they're right. And very quickly desegregated downtown. Uh, I think that disappointed some demonstrators, but they would have demonstrated anyway. Uh, because I think there was... Uh, we all played baseball together. We didn't go to school together. But we played baseball and they had to, you know, I was in an uh, area where I grew up. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was interesting. It's also interesting to see what has come out as the story as opposed to what the story really was. Tex, you know, uh, I'll shift to that now, if I may, to... Uh the Independent Green Party and three of its founding principles, of course, are, uh, and you as one of its co-founders well know this, more trains, less traffic, more candidates, less apathy, fiscally and socially responsible. And on the uh, portion about more candidates and less apathy, so far the Independent Green Party, out of its most recent state meeting, had uh, these nominees for local office. Colonel Albert Burkhart, uh, like yourself, Tex, Colonel Burkhart is a uh, Colonel Burkhart is a Vietnam veteran and was a German language professor at West Point. Colonel Burkhart is running for Isle of Wight uh, Board of Supervisors, the Newport District in 2015. And of course, uh, you may recall that uh, Colonel Burkhart uh, received the most votes of any third-party candidate or, or uh, independent or Green Party candidate in the nation the year he ran for Congress uh, in uh, the 4th Congressional District. I believe it was about 27%, wasn't it, Joe? Uh, in addition to uh, Albert Burkhart, the chairman, the young chairman of the Independent Green Party of Virginia, of Young Greens, Aaron Lyles, is running for school board in, uh, down by Richmond, of course, I'm a candidate for Braddock District Board of Supervisors in Fairfax County. Gail Ferreo Parker, candidate for Fairfax County Board of Supervisors Chair. And Jerry Blay and Tariq Salahi. Those are all the uh, local races. Tariq Salahi running for Warren County Board of Supervisors. House of Delegates uh, nominees so far for 2015 for the Independent Green Party, Colonel Jim Leslie, Elaine Hildebrand, Joseph P. Odo, Jeremiah Heaton, Diane Blay, John W. Smith, and State Senate, uh, Dr. Ken Hildebrand, Terry Modulin, Steve Perrier, Dr. Brad Blanton, and Janet Murphy. Tex, I want to shift the conversation now, if we could, please. If, if you don't mind, I know you're running the show here, but you would never put this in. Uh, there's one man in the state of Virginia who's done more for independent politics than anybody else, and that's you. And I want to thank you for all the work you've put in over years and years and years. Uh, you people watching may not understand or appreciate how many signatures it takes to get someone for a ballot on a ballot for anything. And Kerry Campbell and Joe and Gail and some others, but primarily under the leadership of you, Kerry, uh, many people have been put on the ballot. 
and you're most open about the, uh, you're wide open. You want to put people on the ballot. You believe in democracy. And I want to thank you for doing it. Well, thank you so much, Tex. I'm, I'm honored to uh, work with you, you uh, all the years we've worked most together. of the work here. Uh, <laughs> hey, I second that, Tex, because I tell you what, when I came along, I had already had a couple campaigns under my belt, but when I, in 04, and I met up with this guy, he showed me the wholesale petition gathering and how to do it, and that really made a difference, and, and that's why the more candidates, less apathy has been one of our themes and something that we're really proud to continue to pursue over the years, continuing to recruit candidates, and hopefully folks watching this will see the light that we need candidates on the ballot, and they will join us. So thanks for your efforts, Tex, and Carrie as well, and Gail, of The course. only way we are going to get some change is not going to be through hot air. It's going to be through gathering signatures yep. and putting someone else on the ballot. And I don't particularly don't care now, since we have just Republicans to choose from. Uh, I'm tickled when the media will mention independence. Well, over 99% of the people who vote, vote for a Republican. Where are the independents? I mean, it's just some some facade, something made up out there in, in, in Never Never Land. Uh, if you want changes, you're going to have to change the people who are in office. And the only way to do that is to get out and get signatures and put them on the ballot and then vote for them. Otherwise, we're going to have Republicans, 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 which we have now. Uh, that requires more than, uh, you know, chatting on the Internet or blogging. You have to go out on the streets and get signatures. Yeah. Well, exactly. And it's not that we, uh, I mean, they tend to want to call us spoilers, but as our friend, our senior uh, gentleman, Ralph Nader they said, the spoilers, they, Joe. Yeah, spoilers. they're the spoilers, exactly. They're the ones spoiling it for us, independents trying to get on the ballot and run. So I think what we're all saying here on Green TV is uh, uh, Tex Wood, uh, uh, Independent Green Party, uh, Ninth Congressional District Chairman, uh, Joseph P. Odo, uh, Independent Green Party State Chairman, and Gail Farrell Parker, State Vice Chair, is that the positive solution is to get out. And, and is that right, Joe? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. And Gail, yeah, weigh in on this because you've run for office now 11 straight times. That's amazing. Tell us. Uh, tell Gail us has gathered a lot of signatures. Yeah. Been out there running. As a matter of fact, she won't admit this, but the outcome of the last uh, U.S. Senate election sits right on the Greens and on Gail's shoulders in the manner in which she decided uh, what she said right before the election. I believe it was uh, a viable alternative, which kind of left out uh, one of the people. And that race was won by what, 736 votes? 700, how much? Yeah. Uh, well, that, that, uh, the Virginia Independent Greens, Gail, thank you, and uh, Joe and Carrie, uh, you swung that election. All that work you've done, yes, you've had an impact. Well, I'm uh, proud of you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, there were a lot of people in Virginia that wanted some changes. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, it's the, really the people of Virginia that did it. I was only one vote. Had you not been there for them to use that option, then no talent we might have been stuck with uh, anyway. Exactly. <laughs> True. More candidates, less apathy, I think is the message. And it seems to me, if I can paraphrase uh, Tex, that... Uh, to be on the ballot is to be in the debate. To be in the debate is to influence the debate. And these independent Green Party leaders uh, have all been on the ballot and advocated uh, for positive uh, Green New Deal eco-job solutions. Tex, I want to come back to a lot of folks may not know how many years and how much time and money you invested, your own money, your own time, uh, blood, sweat, and tears in ballot access in Virginia and the many ballot access cases that you filed and fought for reducing the number of signatures that are required to get people on the ballot. Could you talk just a bit about that, uh, Tex, uh, Tex Wood, about uh, what yeah. that experience was? Now that's another thing that just kind of fell in my lap. And it's either, you know, <laughs> who's going to bail the cat? And, uh, so that's what got me involved in it. Uh, it is now remotely possible for an independent to make a statewide ballot. 
uh, Gail and you guys prove it is now possible. Uh, highly improbable, but possible. <laughs> Nowhere near what your other states have. I think we're what? For difficulty, we're about the 37th or 38th for getting somebody on the ballot. Uh, folks don't, folks understand money makes politics. But what they don't understand, because they're not aware of it, is uh, the ballot access laws uh, that prevent people from getting on the ballot. And they're much more stringent for someone who is not a Republican than they are for an independent or a third party candidate. Uh, we could have some changes, improvements still in Virginia. Uh, I'm not like that in court. Somebody else could go do that. I spent seven years there. Seven years? As the good guy. As the good guy. As the good guy. That was a well, I guess it depends on who you ask. But I was, I was the plaintiff, not the defendant. My goodness. Seven years of ballot access law. And uh, thanks to Tex Woods' uh, great efforts for uh, getting a uh, reduced number of signatures from uh, ballot access, uh, I believe it went down from what was it, Tex, 25,000 to 10,000? For state, oh, uh, roughly, it was a percentage. Before, it was a percentage of the of the people who voted, and then they rounded off to ten thousand. But uh, when I started this, this will—I don't think it was shocking to you. I was going to be surprised to hear any of the listeners, viewers. Uh, if someone wanted to run, get on the ballot to run for a statewide office, he or she had to collect. X number of signatures, somewhere between probably back 20,000 signatures. But, uh, and there are 11 congressional districts in the state. Uh, one has to, at that time, and still, which needs to be altered, uh, has to collect all of the state. But the statute there, a person who wanted to be on the ballot could not himself or herself collect signatures anywhere except in his own or her own district. Oh, incredible. Uh, that's a fact. Wow. Uh, they've now changed that. Uh, where thanks, to, thanks to many of your efforts, Tex. Uh, I believe the term, and then it went from uh, contiguous districts uh, yes. back along about uh, 2000, and then it finally went to being able to collect everywhere. You're watching a, a green, independent green, Green Party, Green TV, the show that advocates for positive eco-job solutions. On the show with us today is George R. Tex Wood of the Independent Green Party, uh, Independent Green Party State Chairman, uh, Joseph P. Odo, and Independent Green Party State Vice Chair, Gail Forreal Parker. We're talking about uh, how it, what it takes to get on the ballot for state, local, local, state, and federal office in Virginia. For local office, it takes 125 valid signatures. For state office, for House of Delegates, also 125 valid signatures in Virginia. If you're running for state Senate, 250 valid signatures. Now, if you're running for U.S. Congress in Virginia, that's 1,000 valid signatures. And then statewide for U.S. Senate, for governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, it takes 10,000 valid signatures. When you're running as an independent Green Party candidate in Virginia, that requires verification of each of those signatures by the State Board of Elections. That is a different standard for the Independent Green Party of Virginia than the two larger parties whose signatures are verified by their own internal uh, mechanism. And they do not have the mechanism to do that uh, accurately, properly, or at all. Uh, and the signatures also require, and this is, this is completely against equal uh, justice under the law. Those signatures have to be collected at least 400 from each of the 11 congressional districts. Uh, now, when the, uh, the Republicans, the Democrats or the Republicans, have a convention, the delegate votes, the total, that's what counts. They could get uh, zero delegate votes from five or six different uh, congressional districts, but as long as the total was the most, then that's the person who gets the nomination. Whereas in way out collecting signatures, you had best get, well, 800 to get 400 approved right. from each of the 11 congressional districts. 
that uh, just isn't right. But it's very convenient for the Republicans. Uh, Tex, uh, Tex Wood of the Independent Green Party of Virginia. Tex, uh, uh, thank you so much for being with us. We're coming down to about two minutes on Green TV as we offer positive solutions. Tex, if you would, looking ahead to 2015 for the Independent Green Party of Virginia, uh, already with some uh, candidates out there uh, running for local, state, uh, local and state office, uh, chart it out for us. How do you think it looks uh, down in the 9th Congressional District uh, and Patrick County? The possibilities are out there as they are anywhere else in the state, but it's a question of whether somebody's going to get up and do it. Uh, I would like to see uh, congressional candidates in each of the 11 districts across the state, and I'd like to see us put somebody on another statewide ballot. Uh, you're aware of which which particular, uh, <laughs> but we'll keep that one, you know, no sense in. in well, well, we're a couple of years <laughs> off from the uh, governor and lieutenant governor races. Of course, um, uh, the House of Delegates, uh, state senate coming up. Now, Tex, 2016, uh, three people specifically are being speculated about right now as running as Green Party uh, candidates for president. Uh, the independent senator from Vermont, Bernie Sanders, uh, yeah. The 2012 Green Party nominee, Dr. Jill Stein, medical Dr. Jill Stein, and of course, uh, the Independent Green Party of Virginia uh, has long worked with uh, Michael Bloomberg, the independent uh, mayor of uh, New York. Any other Green Party candidates out there, Tex, we've got, we're down to a minute now. Any other Green Party candidates out there on the presidential horizon that impress you? Not green. Uh, I've only got one who's a Republican, uh, that would be Elizabeth Warren. Uh, but uh, you've mentioned Bernie Sanders, and you've mentioned the other two, Mr. Stein. Uh, Dr. Stein, yeah. I'm hopeful, but we, Dr. Stein, but they need to declare and get out quick. So we get certain to us, put them on the ballot in 50 states. Well, uh, it was reported today on the Green Party United States Facebook page that Dr. Stein is in a discussion. Tex Wood, thank you so much for joining us today on Green TV. Tex, the Independent Green Party 9th Congressional District Chairman and State Chairman Joe Odo, Independent Green Party of Virginia State Chair, State Vice Chair of the Independent Green Party, Gail Farrell Parker. Thank you for watching Green TV. Join us again next time when we focus on positive Green New Deal eco-job solutions for the economy. I'm Kerry Campbell.